Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 221 of the Michael Lab Show. I have my magic mushroom shirt on today. Good old fashioned Paul Stamet. The first time I take mushrooms is going to be live on the podcast. Just watch. I guarantee it's going to be live on the podcast. Just kidding. Um, what's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 221 of the Michael Lab Show. Um, I want to give a quick apology to everybody who had to sit through the dreadful podcast episode I did 220 on Tuesday. Um, that was not my best work. That was probably the worst podcast I've ever done in my life. Um, wow. Let me try to explain it. So, so about a week ago, like I can't even, I couldn't even explain it. I couldn't even explain it on, uh, on Tuesday or on Monday about a week ago. Actually, yeah, this time last week, my mom, she was sick, right? She, she was sick. I woke up and, uh, and she was not feeling good at all. My dad was fine. Girlfriend was fine. She was not feeling good at all. And I'm like, okay, well, we should probably get COVID tested just in case. And so I went out to CVS. I got a COVID test. I got um, a COVID test for her. Um, I got a COVID test for me, which, by the way, was twenty three ninety nine for two COVID tests from Abbott, which is like, man, it should be a little bit cheaper, man. If you want to get tested for COVID, like, you got to have some money. Not even have some money, but you got to be willing to spend that much money. Which is like not not a crazy amount, but for a COVID test, it should like it should be pretty much free, but like it's not. Like I remember when I went to community college, they would just give out condoms. Like they would just give out condoms to everybody. Like that's what they should be doing with the COVID test. They should be doing the same thing with the COVID test. Um. Anyways, I digress. <clears throat> How's the camera? Is it straight? Can you guys see straight? Let me, let me adjust something real quick. Actually, no, it's it's fine. It's fine. We're good. Um. Yeah, so I went ahead and I got two COVID tests. I tested myself. I came back negative. I tested myself at the CVS. Um, then I had my mom test herself just to make sure that I wasn't COVID because I didn't want to have. To, I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to work and have COVID if if I came back positive for it. I would have felt terrible for it. Um, so I tested myself. I came back negative. She came back negative. Didn't think anything of it. She was sick, but she wasn't like that sick. So whatever. I didn't re- really didn't think anything of it. I was just like, oh, it must have been like the flu or something like that. A whole week goes by. Sunday. So this past Sunday, I wake up at three thirty in the morning, and I'm on the toilet, just flying out of my ass and coming out of my mouth, like it was disgusting. And from three thirty to about because I had to open the gym at seven, so between three thirty to six thirty, it was nonstop throw up non-stop pooping until I got to the gym and I was lucky to get someone to cover my shift at eight o'clock. So I was only there for an hour, but it was, it was brutal, dude. I probably threw up within 24 hours, at least a hundred times. And I dry heaved probably about 200, 250 times. And every time I put anything in my stomach, it would just fly right back out of me. It was crazy. Like I've had the flu before, but I've never had a flu like that before. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with COVID and not COVID directly, but because of the lockdown, because of the mask mandate, so we ought to wear a mask for so long, um, our immune system haven't been fed any type of viruses for about almost two years, a year and a half. So once I got hit with the flu, it just, it crushed me. It put me on my back. Um, And I looked up um, like flu numbers for this year, not flu numbers, but just any articles on 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 the flu for this year. And it said this year is going to be an intense flu. And it makes sense. It makes sense. Our bodies aren't used to being sick. But a part of me is like, hey, man, we should probably just wear a mask all the time during the winter because it it, it, it is not fun. Like being sick was not fun. Um, so I, it's, I'm recording this on Wednesday. And as of today, I'm feeling the best I felt. Um, I would say I feel 95% better. Um, the only 5% is maybe I feel slightly lethargic um, and slightly tired. And that probably has more or less to do with the f- the weight I lost. I went I st- I went to bed Saturday, Saturday night weighing about 208, 210 pounds. I woke up, um, I woke up Monday, Tuesday morning, um, probably Monday morning at, I don't know, 200, 200 pounds even. Like, I lost about 10 pounds just throwing up and just diarrhea. It was brutal, man. I don't know how many people out there have been sick this year. Um, I know it's kind of been going around. I've sp- Of the people I've spoken to, a decent amount of people have been sick. I think it's just that time of the year, man. 
And I think it's just going to be more intense this year. People haven't been sick for a while. Um, I think that's what we're going to be dealing with, you know, and on top of that COVID, it's like, I was, you know, honestly, I'm double vaxxed, right? I'm, 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 I'm on board with the vax. I'm going to get the booster when the booster comes out and it's ready and, and everyone can get it. Um, but I was like, Jesus, man, like I couldn't imagine like, like if I got, if I got COVID right, like on Monday or Tuesday, even Sunday, like I would be down on my back, bro, because it took everything. It, I mean, I, it took everything out of me that flu. I've never, I'd never been down like that before. Like I couldn't move. Like when I was on the floor, um, cause I lay on the floor whenever I'm really sick, I lay on the bathroom floor. Um, and the reason why I do this is because it's nice and cold and keeps my body cold. And if I need to throw up and poop, I can just roll over, hop on the toilet, grab a trash can. I know it's disgusting. And if you're eating, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> but it's over. Um, right now we're, you know, Taylor didn't, she hasn't gotten it. We hope she doesn't get it. If she does get it, you know, ideally she gets it on the weekend because I'm off all weekend. I can take care of her. Uh, when she gets sick, she doesn't get nearly as sick as I do. Uh, when I get sick, I'm like my father. I am just zero to a hundred. Like it's intense. It's intense. Um, and like I said, my mom, she barely had it. Like she was sick, but she wasn't nearly as bad as I was. Um, I mean, I'm a dumbass though. Like on Sunday, I was the worst day. And then Monday comes around and I hop on and I try to do a podcast and you guys saw how that went. Like I was like 10 minutes in, I was falling apart. I thought I could do it, but like you don't realize talking and thinking takes a lot of energy out of you, especially for me. Like it takes like for me to think it takes a lot of energy out of me. Um, so I, I, I tried to, I almost, I almost scrapped it. I almost was like, ah, I don't really want to do it, but I, I want to get something out to you guys. And I know it wasn't my best work and I apologize for that. I know it was only 15 minutes long and I usually, I pump out 40 minute podcast. Um, but I just wanted to connect. I just wanted to tell you guys what was going on. And I felt bad if I didn't, I felt bad if I just left everybody out there in the air, um, in the dark. So I want to get something out there. I wanted to speak to the people. I wanted to speak to my people and I wanted to just tell you guys that I was, it was hit really hard with the flu. Um, it's Wednesday as I'm recording this and I'm feeling a lot better. My dumbass goes out on Monday. I, I don't know. I'm I'm smart, right? I'm a smart person. I, I think critically, and I I feel like I'm a rational human being, but some things I just do not, I just do not click on. Like, some things I'm just so, like, stupid. Like, I go to Wawa on Monday because I feel like I can eat. And in my head, like, literally in my head, it goes, I'm not sick. It go, Well, yes, I'm sick, right? I know I'm sick. But on my head... I'm down 10 pounds, right? So I need to eat so I can put back on the weight. So what's the best way to do that? Eat a lot of food, eat fattening food, which is so dumb. And I know like it sounds crazy and it's like how like you should have like you have no like how do you have any responsibilities? <laughs> and so my dumb ass goes to Wawa and I order a chicken noodle soup small and I order a chicken salad sandwich, like a like probably the worst thing you can have for your stomach after you just have the flu. So I order a chicken salad sam sandwich like a dumbass. And then I get up to the cash register line. As I'm waiting for Wawa to make my chicken salad sandwich and my chicken noodle soup, I see it, it's 1130 in the afternoon, right? It's 1130 in the afternoon. And I'm going to the cash register and I see these two burritos on the checkout line. And like, by, mind you, these two burritos are like little breakfast burritos, really tiny, about like that big, four or five inches long, not that thick, just really tiny burritos wrapped up. You can see the um, the evaporated milk or water and everything because they've been out since like seven o'clock this morning. They're for breakfast, right? You know, nine o'clock this morning. They've been for two to four or five hours. And my dumbass grabs them, impulsively just grabs them like a bird going after a worm. And I get back in the car and I crush them and I crush half my sandwich. And then for the rest of the day, I'm like wondering why I don't feel good, you know? And I'm like, oh man, I don't feel good. My stomach hurts. I'm like, well, it's, I mean, even if you didn't have the flu, like I ate two things that I should not eat because they're definitely, they're not expired, but they're not fresh, not fresh to start out with. And then my dumb ass goes ahead and eats a, a chicken salad sandwich. I eat the other half the next day. And I didn't feel nearly, like, I felt okay on Tuesday, but Wednesday, today is the day I feel the best. But, like, I, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what my brain processes. I don't know how I manage to get through things. Um, but I, 
I surprise myself every day by just moving on to another step. It's um, Dow Jones reverses as House clears way for one trillion dollar infrastructure deal. Bill, Bill, Bill. Um, but yeah, so that's that's where we are. We we made it. Um, we made it out of the sickness. Hopefully Taylor doesn't get it. If she does get it, hopefully she can get it on the weekend so I can take care of her Friday, Saturday, Sunday when I'm off. Um, Taylor's mom texted me and asked me if I was in school. And I was like, no, I'm not in school yet. I start next week. I panicked because like, holy crap, maybe I do start this past week. Um, because that's, that's something that I would, I, I will mess up in. Like, that's something that I could easily blow. Like I, I've, I've forgotten to take finals before because I thought they were on a different day. And that was like the issue when you were, when you were, um, online is that you knew you had a class, right? So you went to class. You didn't miss class, but when everything was online, you didn't feel like you ever had class. Everything was just like time during the day. There was no, it was never an event. Class is never an event. Like this upcoming semester, my last semester, I have three classes and it's going to be an event. I got to go there. I got to go in person. I got to talk to people in class. Uh, but when it was, when it was in COVID dude, like you just, everything just felt like the same, it felt like the same thing. You felt like you were just getting on the same roller coaster ride every day. In a lot of ways, that was, like, the best for me because I was able to knock out so many classes. Like, so many classes. I was able to save so much time, so much money. Um, so, I, I start class next week. Um, I'm, I'm, my goal is to still get two podcasts, two, podca- two podcast episodes out a week. Uh, we'll see. I might have to adjust that to maybe one podcast a week. I might have to change the schedule. Uh, my work schedule is going to be a little bit different. I'm working Tuesday, Thursday. Um, and then Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday is one week. And then the next week, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm either working two days a week or four days a week. Um, and that's to make time for school. I have, cl- I have three classes, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, just the way that the class is lined up. Um, I got my, um, my syllabus for one of my classes. I think it's my social entrepreneurship class, which looks pretty fascinating. 25% of the grade is, um, the final exam. Um, uh, 35% of the grade is a... Um, business plan, which I'm pretty interested in, um, especially nowadays, like going back to school, just to see how the business world, how how the curriculum is going to adapt to the world that's been going around. Um, everything from like diversity and like how that's a big initiative for businesses now um, for a lot of different reasons. One of the biggest reasons, one of the dark reasons why it's such a big deal nowadays is a lot of these businesses get grants and stuff and they get like tax benefits for being more diverse, um, which is good, right? I think a diverse group is good, but when the inclination is for money, it's a little like, uh, you're just doing it for the money. You're doing it because you actually want to be diverse. Um, but it's interesting to see between that COVID, um, it's just, it's going to be fun to see what kids, what adults, I guess, well, all adults at college have to say about COVID and how businesses are going to change and how they adapted to it. So, Looks like I get to do come up with a business plan, which I'm excited to do. I, I have a lot of business ideas. Um, the biggest issue with me is just gaining the capital to 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 act out on those ideas, um, and so that that's exciting. And then I have two other classes. I don't know what they are, like management something. Um, so, but that that's going to be exciting. That's in person, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I kind of cut back on the vlogs. I know I did about three vlogs in a row, three weeks in a row. It's just hard. I, I don't have the time. Um, it's not that I don't have the time. I, I don't have, I, I'm not willing to make the time right now. I have other things I'm really trying to focus on and, um, just doing those kind of, it as it adds a hassle to my life that I don't really want to have to deal with right now, especially moving on like this from today to this time next year is going to be a huge transition for me, Taylor and us. Um, everywhere from new careers to new living situations, new locations, new states. It's one place, one thing that we are looking at to actually move to a new state, which I'm, I'm thrilled about. Um, there's a possibility that where we move, um, I'm just going to say, so where we want to eventually go to, we want to eventually live in Blacksburg. Uh, she eventually wants to get her master's degree. Um, and we want, and, and, uh, she wants to go to Virginia tech and I've always, I've wanted to live in Virginia tech pretty much since the first time I went there. It's really beautiful. Once I got over like my immaturity of like, oh, blah, 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 blah. once I got over all that nonsense, um, once I got over my freaking 10-year-old brain, I really like the town. It's nice and cheap. 
It's not that expensive to live there. There's plenty of career opportunities. That was another thing I had against. I was like, oh, there's no career opportunities here. Um, but once I actually looked at um, LinkedIn and um, um, uh, Indeed, there's plenty of job opportunities. Blacksburg, Christiansburg, Radford, Roanoke. Um, just those four cities alone offer a lot of jobs. Deloitte's out of there, which is a big um, business consultant company. Um, or, yeah, business consulting company. Um, and then there's a couple other major companies out of there. Um, but my, the, what I want to do is to graduate from Towson this year, start applying to jobs um, mid to late, no, mid to late November, early to mid December. So mid November to mid December, hopefully apply for jobs, do online interviewing and all that and land a job about mid to early to mid anytime in January, land a job there. Um, she lands a job around that time. Um, it's much more easier for her because she's already graduated. So she's just waiting for right time to start applying. So she doesn't get hired too early. Um, and then live there for about a year and then hope, and then hopefully get in-state tuition after that. And then after that, she goes to get her master's degree. And what I want to do, which I have told her, but it is something that I would love to do. Um, the older I get, the more I love education. And the more I realize the meaning in life is to learn. And, um, and I think, I think the reason why learning is the most important thing is because um, I think relationships are extremely healthy and having multiple relationships with a lot of people um, just communication skills is so extremely important that, um, I can, by learning, I can increase that, right? So it'd be really nice to go to school there, honestly. And it sounds crazy coming from me. Like I never thought I would ever say that, like voluntarily going to college, like that's crazy, especially now, especially after dropping out and being a dumbass for so long. <clears throat> um, but that would be awesome. Hopefully get a job at Virginia Tech. And maybe if getting a job at Virginia Tech, maybe they pay for my college. Um, that would be awesome. It's so much cheaper to live up there. I can do so much with the podcast. I can look for an extra space with the podcast. If we get a, a huge, like we can get like a, uh, you can get like a three-story townhouse with a garage for the same price as like a regular one-bedroom apartment in Annapolis. And I know like the way, like, uh, the, um, like the jobs, they don't pay you nearly as much up there. I understand that, but between her and I savings and my investments, like we're fine from that end, but it's just a fun, it's a plan that I've had for a while. We've had for a while. She kind of faded back on it. Um, I kind of faded back on it, but I think it was both in the back of our minds for a long time. And it's just really nice to see now that we've come to agreement on this. And this is, this is kind of what we want. Um, anything could happen. It could change. But as of right now, that's, that's the goal. Right, that's the goal to up, upheave this this podcast and move it into Blacksburg. Hopefully, um, um, <clears throat> the, ideally, what would be the best if I could take this podcast, Jesus Christ, Taylor. Um, ideally, what would be the best for the podcast is if I could take it there and then interview a bunch of professors there. Um, I know it's most more likely that they would do interviews with me if I um, am a student. But I think if they can see my podcast and just listen to a few of my podcasts and listen to me talk and and know that I'm willing to listen to them and I want to pick their brains and I want to learn. Um, I mean, clearly, I, I read so many things um, that it would be really cool to kind of have a podcast like that where I have professionals on and I listen to them talk and I have professors on and listen to their knowledge, their research. I mean, from every department, English, um, history, uh, biology, chemistry, um, mathematics, physics, like whatever it is, health and fitness, social, social studies. Um, it's so funny when I went to school in elementary school, middle school, high school, social studies was history. Um, but now social studies is a study of society, uh, gender studies, uh, women's studies, stuff like that. Um, but it used to be, it used to be social studies used to equate to history, which is really fascinating, but it's not like that anymore. History is history. Um, so that's kind of the plan there. Um, just trying to catch you guys up with everything that's been going on for like the last week and a half that I've been kind of MIA. And like I said, I know I haven't been MIA. I did post a 15 minute podcast, but that just wasn't enough. I didn't feel like I did enough. I, I, I left that. I thought I had the energy, but I was just toast, dude. I got 10 minutes into it. And I could, I, I literally could have fell asleep on the table. I was destroyed. That was, that was the worst, man. I hate being sick. God, I hate, I love being productive. So whenever I'm, whenever I'm out, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I feel like I'm losing ground on the world. I feel like the world's just blowing past me. And I hate that feeling. I want to constantly be on the cutting edge. I want to be in front of everybody. Um, 
yeah. I don't know. That's that's just kind of where that's that's been where I've been lately. Um, it's good to be back. Though. I'm happy to be back in front of the mic, talking to you people, seeing what's going on out there. Um, I don't know, but it's um it's a weird world out there right now. You're kind of getting like this weird sense in in America and the whole world that we're kind of at a standstill. We don't really know what's happening. Uh, this Afghanistan thing has been very very strange. Like. Um, I've, I've seen so many reports of like, I mean, you got, you got to think like, there's a lot of things in, um, you know, the history of presidencies that are going to, that are red, that are not red flags, but they stand out for every president, every presidency. George Bush is always going to be nine 11, right? Um, Barack Obama, in my opinion, is always going to be the, um, extreme, um, tactics he took to the war in Afghanistan and dropping bombs and everything like that. Um, Donald Trump is going to be COVID and the way he handled COVID and how he didn't handle it correctly. And you know, this Joe Biden administration already, you're seeing, um, you're already seeing signals of like, people are, people are pissed, you know, people are not happy. You know, COVID was supposed to be kind of under control. And I understand a lot of it has to do with unvaccinated people and people not wearing masks when they should be wearing masks. Um, but more than that, I think what's really going to be the sore thumb to his presidency is this Afghanistan thing. It's been uh, it's been hard to watch, you know. I um. I don't think we should be at war with Afghanistan, right? I think twenty years was a long time. Um, I don't think I don't think I don't even really know the re- reason why we went to war with Afghanistan or why we stayed in Afghanistan for as long as we did. Um, I know a lot of people say there's a lot of minerals and stuff there, a lot of lithium, and lithium is kind of the future of the world if you if you believe in electric cars and electrical power. Um, but the way that we pulled out of Afghanistan seems so... Um, it seemed like child's play. Um, and the way that it's been dealt with, the way people have been ignoring things, the way that he doesn't really speak... Like he's confident about what's happening over there. The way he 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 walks away from news reporters, and I'm not I'm not like I'm not anti Biden. Like I think Biden's a fine president. I think he, you know, is he cut out to be a president? No. Was Donald Trump cut out to be a president? No. But was Donald Trump the president? Yes. Would Joe Biden be the president? Yes. So it's kind of like this is what we have. But just from an outsider looking in, not a veteran, no history in the military whatsoever. I know military people. That's the closest I get to the military. I've never wanted to be in the military. Um, I don't know what it feels like to be in the military and watch Afghanistan completely get overtaken. But from my opinion, I feel like we should have, I feel like we should be out of Afghanistan. I don't see why we keep on fighting over there. Um, we, we, at, at the time we subdued ISIS, right? We, we pretty much got rid of it. Um, we made it really tiny. And then just the way that, Af- the way that we pulled out was so, it was so, it seems so, it seems like child's play, you know? Um, and I've seen a lot of people speak out on it and the best person to speak on it was Jocko Willink and Jocko is a former Navy SEAL. He's a very, very, very intelligent person. Um, White House staff are now required to get vaccinated for COVID fact checked old photos from the Philippines shared in false posts about Afghans being evacuated from Kabul, Kabul. Um, but it's been a disaster. It's been a disaster. Tens of thousands of Americans left behind. In my head, this is what happened. There was a plan to there were, the plan to get out of Afghanistan was not thought out. The information that we were given was wrong. Somebody tricked us, and we pulled out way too quick, way too early on a on a, on a false premise that we could have. We failed. We left too quickly. We got overtaken by the Afghanistan by or by um, um, the Taliban. And now we're trying to backpedal and saying that we'll get everybody out. It's under control. But in reality, it's not. Um, I feel like we should have left Afghanistan, but we should have done it in a much more controlled manner. Maybe took all the equipment out. Um, maybe taken uh, the, 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 the Americans out. Maybe taken our refugees out. But just the way that it's been happening, like these videos that you're seeing already of like Afghans getting like the, you know, their face pummeled, you know, women getting whipped in the streets. Like it's brutal. It's brutal what's happening. And it's like, this is what's going to happen. You know, Afghanistan's going to be, it's that it's going to be under the Taliban's law. And it's not going to be friendly to women. 
And if you're a gay person, they will kill you or they will hurt you or they will put you in prison. If you're a woman, you will, will not have rights anymore. Um, if you're a young girl, you will be sold into sex slavery. And if you're a young boy, you're going to get given AK-47 and told that the Western world needs to go down and up in flames. It's just going to happen, you know, and it's sad. And it's sad. I think the thing that makes me the most sad about it is the people's voluntary voluntary ignorance to it, towards it. They don't pay attention to it. Um, they're so worried about other things that this whole thing doesn't matter to them. You know, we, we, we love equality, but we, sh- but we don't. But when, when it's not in America, we don't care. And I understand that viewpoint. And I understand the argument that we should take care of ourselves first. And I think we should. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, like, if you go to Baltimore, it's, it's, there's some rough places there. But I, I also think that as a human race, we need to take care of each other. Um, and if anything, if you if that argument is we need to take care of Americans, well, we should have taken care of those Americans. We should have flew them home and made sure they were safe. And make sure that they weren't trapped in a Taliban city, you know. And it's it's sad to see. And you know the the poll numbers are showing it. People are not happy. You know, people have lost a lot of respect for Joe Biden. And, and you know, this is kind of expected. I, I'm not shocked by this. This has always been his mo. He's he's a he's a, he's a he. Um, this is what happens. He's he's been a senator forever. Um, these games are played, and people die. And it's just. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not that educated on it. I'm waiting for like Rogan to have like Jocko on or like um, some CIA agent on, and like I actually want to get the inside scoop. I want to hear what's really going on. Um, but that's that, and it's I don't know. Just from the for, just from outsider looking in, you see kids. You know, you see a 19 year old kid fall out of an airplane. It's like he's holding on to the airplane because he wants to come to America. You know what does that say about? You know what does that say? to him you know he's 19 years old he wasn't even alive when you know taliban completely ran afghanistan you know he wasn't it's just a history book for him you know if you're 44 years old if you're 50 years old you were around for pre um pre-democracy in afghanistan you know and and it's it's there's got to be a message that has to be accepted by all when you see thousands and thousands of people chasing or hundreds of people chasing a plane down the runway jumping on the side of it you know, that's got to be a real message. People got to look at that and be like, oh, damn. If anything, if anything, what it should do is allow us to appreciate what we have in this country and maybe maybe start mending our broken relationships that we have with each other. You know, that's one thing that has been bothering me. Like, it, it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. This whole, this whole, this extreme um, divide that we have between the Republicans and the Democrats is crazy. It's crazy to me because I don't think it's true. I don't think it's true. I think it's fake. I think the, I think the extreme ends of both sides have overtaken the, the ground. And I think people who are centrist, people like me who are on the middle ground, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very liberal on a lot of things. Most things social, I'm very liberal on. But I'm also conservative on a lot of things as well. And I, I think I'm the average American. I think most Americans are thinking like me. But we, we've had the, the extreme left and the extreme right start deciding on everything that takes place. I don't think the hatred we have for each other is actually as real as is shown on the news. You know, you see like, um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really want to get into it too much, but I just don't feel like it's true. I feel like there's a lot of human love in this country and I feel like we, we have to come together. Like we have to stop. And it's complicated because people are dying and there's a COVID, you know, COVID outbreak going on and, you know, there's freedom of choice, right? But then there's also the vaccine. Um, and now there's FDA approval and it's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think the thing that bothers me the most is people just yelling at each other and arguing with each other. Because um, I, I don't think that's ever the way to fix things. I think the way to fix things, conversate with each other and understand each other. Um I don't know. I don't know. I see things like more than half of Florida students now go to now go to schools mandating mask in defiance of DeSantis. Um, I don't know why we can't just allow people to wear masks. I don't know why wearing a mask has become such a um, from genuine impact. I must probably request fund with such as PE and fund charges. You asked we listen to raw data. I don't know why people get so upset if someone wears a mask. Like, well, let people wear a mask. Let people be vaccinated. But at the same time, I think it should be okay if somebody doesn't want to get vaccinated. And, I, and the, does that make me a terrible person for saying? 
I don't know. I don't know. I, it's a complicated situation, and I don't know. I don't know. I kind of want to stay away from it. I don't really want to talk to it too much. Um, so, um, it's fascinating to see what's going on in California, man. Governor Newsom's getting recalled. We'll see, man. Uh, Larry Edler is the um, Republican guy who's um, um, running for the the new the new governor of California. It's fascinating. You watch Governor Cuomo. He's no longer the governor of New York, New York, uh, New York the state, New York, obviously. De Blasio is the mayor of New York City. Um, there's now a girl governor there, which is awesome. Um, but there's a possibility that Governor Newsom gets kicked out too. He gets recalled. You're just seeing like a huge switch. Like that. Th- those those are huge things. Like those are much more pivotal than people give give credit to. Like people are speaking up, and people don't like this this dictatorship that that we feel like we've been in you know people people um the one thing that i think americans hate the most is the freedom and a lot of people who have the who who can say whatever they want about anything that's a freedom and it eventually comes back to you and then eventually when it starts affecting what you can say that's when you become upset by it um and i think you've started to see that happen um so Joe Rogan confirmed to Spotify is losing influence. Experts say these two people, these two factors are driving people out of Baltimore. I can tell you the two factors driving people out of Baltimore is there's no employment and the crime rates are through the roof. The homicides are through the roof. I've been re-listening to Jordan Peterson lately. His books have single-handedly helped me the most out of any books I've ever read in my entire life. Um, I've read, uh, 12 rules for life and maps of meaning, uh, maps of meaning. I don't think I have 12 rules for life here. I think I give it to my buddy to read and he has to give it back to me or I never bought that book and I just listened to it on tape. I'm pretty sure I read it. Oh yeah. He wrote, um, maps of meaning, which I read maps of meaning, which is an incredible book. It's a hard book to read. I got it at the beginning of lockdown, but it's, I highly, highly recommend it. It's really good. Um, 12 rules for life. And then another book called 12 more rules for life. I've been getting back into them. Um, and I think the reason why I've been getting back into them is because just the climate that we live in, you know, he is somebody who for men, I think he's the best thing possible. You know, he teaches men to claim responsibility, to grow up, to stop acting like a child, to make your bed, as I'm looking at my bed that's unmade. But mind you, Taylor and I have been, okay, I didn't make my other bed too. We've been sleeping separately so we don't, so I don't get her sick. Um, but he is such a good person to listen to. And he's been back better than ever doing Jordan Peterson things. Um, and I used to listen to him all the time, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, I've listened to him all the time. I've been listening to him since I was like 19 years old, which is crazy to say. Like time has flown by so quick. Um, but he just talks about responsibility and just being a dude and like taking care of your shit and like stop blaming everybody for everything. Um, stop wasting time. Stop saying you're not smart. Stop stop putting off what you know you need to do. And if you did, life would be better. And if you did not do, life would be worse. Like stop voluntarily digging your own grave. You know, and like, that's so powerful. That's so powerful for men to hear. And, you know, I'm not saying that women shouldn't hear too, but what I'm saying is I'm a dude and I I know a lot of guys. I know a lot of people in my life that when I speak to them, you can see like they're a caged animal, right? They have so much potential. They have so much potential, but someone hasn't told them that they have the potential or they don't have the confidence to unleash that potential, and they're scared to unleash their potential. They don't want to hurt people. They don't want to fail. Because failing is the worst thing you could possibly do as a man. You don't want to do it. You want to constantly win. You want to constantly be better. But no one's told them that, hey, man, it's okay to fail. You just got to keep pushing, pushing, and pushing. Um, and, and do things that are hard. And take care of the things that are important. Work on your freaking relationship. If you're in a relationship, work on it. Work on it. Provide, find stability. If you have a job, kick ass at it. If you're in school, get straight A's. Work really hard on the things you have. And then find one thing that you want to do and keep going towards it. But you need to find stability and responsibility 
and humility. You need to work really hard. You need to develop all the skills to be a monster. You need, you need to develop the skills to be a, a, a beast. But don't be a beast. Don't be hurtful. Just be powerful. Be a powerful dude. Um, some of my favorite quotes by him, uh, Jordan, and I know he's hated on so much. I think he's misrepresented more than anybody else I know. Where is it? Um, here's some of them. I don't think that I don't think that you have any insight whatsoever into until in, into your capacity for good until you have some well developed insight into your capacity for evil. To stand up straight with your shoulders back is to accept the terrible responsibility of life with eyes wide open. It means deciding to voluntarily transform the chaos of potential into the realities of habitable order. It means adapting the burden of self-conscious vulnerability and accepting the end of the unconscious paradise of childhood, where finitude and mortality are only dimly comprehended. It means willingly undertaking the sacrifices necessary to generate a productive and meaningful reality. It means acting to please God in the ancient languages. When you have something to say, silence is a lie. I like that a lot. That, that's so true because you see a lot of people who, you see they have so much potential and they have so much to say and so much to speak upon, but they're so scared of talking. They're so scared of being judged by another human. They're so scared that they might be wrong, dude. Like you have to be, a, you have to be, you cannot be afraid to say things that will offend people when you speak. You have to speak. It's like a child. Like you see a child, they push the boundaries until they know what those boundaries are. But when they hit the boundaries, they learn. When you speak, you have to be, you, you cannot be afraid of being offensive. There's a difference to, between not being afraid of being offensive and being an asshole though. You know, like, I'm not going out there just, you can't go out there and just scream racial slurs. But if you're going to try to take like, like break down complex, um, uh, complex, complex systems and complex issues. You're gonna, you're gonna be pushing boundaries. You're gonna be pushing boundaries because there's gonna be uncomfortable conversations. And thank God there's uncomfortable conversations because imagine if there wasn't, then it would all be easy. And if it was all easy, that would be a failure. Like it, it should not be easy. You're going to pay a price for every bloody thing you do and everything you don't do. You don't get to choose to not pay a price. You get to choose which poison you're going to take. That's it. There's two more, three more. If you don't say what you think, then you'll kill your unborn self. God, that's so true, man. That's so true. If you don't say what you think, you're going to kill your unborn self. You, you have potential, right? Everybody has potential inside of them. In order to find the potential, you need to do things and say things to get to that potential. If you're afraid to say things or do things because society's pressures and what you need to be, you're going to kill your future self. And by killing your future self, you're going to make your present self depressed. By making your present self depressed, you're going to make the people around you depressed. The people around you are going to be sad. And when the people around you are sad, and when the people around you are depressed, you become sad and you become depressed. And then your future self is never around. And then, then 20, 30 years go by and you're blaming everybody around you. You're blaming your mom, your dad, your sister, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your, your husband, your, your, your wife, your dogs for your unhappiness. But you had the ability to say things and do things and make decisions, but you're afraid to do them because you were afraid of the judgment from others. And now you're in a situation where you regret the things you've done in your life. And you're not happy to be with your life, but it was your fault. It was not everybody else's fault, but now you have a, you have a hatred towards people and now you resent people. Now you resent your own life. You see, like, that's how the cycle works. That's such a good quote. If you don't say what you think you, then you kill your unborn self. If you can't understand why someone is doing, doing something, look at the consequences of their actions, whatever they might be, and then infer the motivations from the consequences. For example, if someone is making everyone around them miserable and you like to know why, their motive may simply be to make everyone around them miserable, including themselves. You can find out what you actually believe rather than what you think you believe by watching how you act. You simply don't know what you believe before that. You are too complex to understand yourself. I don't know. I just been I've been going back and listening to a lot of his podcasts, a lot of his speeches. I've listened to his lectures multiple times. I listened to his whole Bible lecture, which is crazy because I'm not a Catholic, but I think I think you learn a lot through religion. 
I do believe that. I think the lessons are very valuable through religion. Um, and on top of that, I've been reading, I haven't read his books again, but I, I do, I think I might want to read Maps of Meaning again. Um, I do want to get through this Harry Potter series too, though, as well. So, but that's, I don't know. I think in a world like today that we live in, I think he's very important. I think he's a very important uh, figure to have um, and to listen to, listen to speak because he's very elegant with his words. He's powerful with his words and he's very pinpointed with their words. He doesn't waste, he doesn't waste things. Everything he says has a meaning to it, which I think is very important. I think it's very important for men to realize that you are allowed to be a powerful, powerful man. You just have to be a controlled man. You got to be a controlled, powerful human being. And that's what females are attracted to. And that's what the world's attracted to. And that's how you could better the world. So that's that. I'm off my spiel. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'm back. I'm not sick anymore. Um, hopefully I can get podcasts up Tuesday, Thursdays at 6 o'clock in the morning. I do start school next week, so we'll see how that goes. It'll probably take me about two or three weeks, probably about a month to really settle in and get things started. It's going to be a lot of driving, but whatever, we'll get through. i got to wear a mask in class. I don't really care. Whatever. Let's just get it over with. Hopefully, there's no issues with that. So like, Hopefully, people just listen to wear the fucking mask. So, we'll see. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. I'll catch you guys in episode 222 of the Michael Lab Show. Peace out. See you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day.